help me welcome directors Dan Lindsay and TJ Martin. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to take questions, but we want to bring um, uh, a couple people up here with us uh, uh, to take some questions. Our producer, Rich Middlemiss. And uh, straight from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, Coach Bill Courtney, who uh, helped with the game. seen it a couple times now, but the, the first time I was a slobbering fool um, <laughs> because, I mean, you know, that's such an emotional time in my life, and um, I was a slobbering fool because I'm so fat, and I didn't lose weight, and that was disturbing, <laughs> and, 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 and really, it's, it's just, I, I don't know, folks stand up, and, and the, weirdest, the weirdest thing is when people say congratulations, because... Each of you think about what you do for a living and what you do uh, that makes you happy in your life, and then somebody comes and make a film about it, and then they walk up and say congratulations. Well, I mean, it's 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 thoughtful, and, and I'm I'm appreciative of it, but it's still the most difficult thing for me to hear because it's like someone saying congratulations on going to work every day, or congratulations on it, because it's it's not a body of work for me. It is for these guys, but it's just it's my life. For a lot of kids on the team, there's not a lot of uh, consistency in their life um, with, with every, I mean, everything. Like, even just where they're going to sleep every night. I mean, for some of the kids, they really, like, week to week are, are going from one house to the next. So I think the fact that we showed up every day and we were really interested. Bill, I mean, when we came to Bill and, and told him what we were going to do, and he would have to speak for himself, but I think, I hope we uh, translated how genuine we were about wanting to tell the story and not about being telling some sensationalized thing about you know it's it's you know North Memphis is the backdrop but we didn't want to make it about race or class you know this is a story of is a human story about people and we just that heightened the stakes obviously but it was it was more about what happened to them in the course of this time and I think more times than none specifically in that community oftentimes any time that anything that's related to media um, usually is, is like a new story that's kind of like sensationalized, sensationalizing the community. It's usually doing a profile on you know, some, something violent that happened in the community. So I think that at first there were, uh, a lot of the kids were weary. In, in addition to having Bill advocate for us, like Dan said, we just showed up day in, day out. And once they kind of showed, we showed our <laughs> consistency, we just kind of disappeared. And I think it probably also helped that the kids didn't, Nessus quite understand why we were there and what we were doing. I mean, you talk about that, like, yeah. it was Virginia who ran into to Dan, or maybe it was that Virginia, yeah, but yeah, in the, it, this, we've been shooting there for like two, three months, and he came up to Dan and he's like, so, I've been meaning to ask, like, who's going to play me in the movie? He's like, no, this, this is the movie. <laughs> uh, well, I grew up in the South, and uh, as most children who grow up in the South, you become a football fan at an early what? Football freak. <laughs> Football freak, yeah, I preferred the term freak. And uh, I had never aspired to do anything in the documentary space. That wasn't where my experience was. But I came across this article uh, in the Memphis Commercial Appeal following the University of Tennessee's recruiting, which is the school that I went to. And uh, it was just this amazing story that was uh, OC's senior year chronicling the story of what laid in wait for him and him kind of shuttling between these two disparate worlds. but was different from the blind side in the sense that he hadn't been uprooted out of his school. You know, these guys had him going to the same school that he was, uh, his friends went to. And uh, I sent it to these guys because I didn't have uh, any entree into that world. And thankfully, they agreed that it uh, had potential. And so uh, shortly thereafter, we went down there, spent a week filming, uh, met Coach Bill. It really expanded beyond the OC story at that point. And we started to realize, wow, there's OC, and then there's Coach, and the other volunteers, and other kids on the team, like Money. Uh, we didn't meet Chavis until later on, but we realized it could be much bigger uh, than just
just about OC store. Yeah, the, the only thing that drew attention on the cells were their goofy LA socks. <laughs> <laughs> but besides, I mean, see, they, they wore that stuff in North Memphis, which it made it out get alive. you killed, really. <laughs> You see that man's socks, coach? What's, what's up with him? So, um, when it comes to real talk and and sizing you up and having a, an intelligence about people, they are so far ahead of peers their age in other parts of the world. And the bottom line is, these guys were real and they told the truth always. And the kids recognized it, and so they were just part of the rest of the group of people that we put together, volunteers and cooks and bus drivers and ACT prep people, they were just, you know, they're part of the deal. And, and you know, some of the Manassas kids kind of felt like they, they lost me to this other school and there was some heartache at first about it. But two years later, it really did me a lot of good to see these inner city, very inner city Manassas kids and St. George's kids, which is as suburb as it gets and um, polar opposites, uh, sitting there together watching that movie, all of them crying together and hugging each other after the movie. It's, this thing transcends all kind of spectrums, I think. So they loved it, short, long. Here, this is a story that not everybody's heard, and I'm going to do this once, and then I swear I'll shut up. Um, but I think it'll give you, I think it'll answer your question about why it's exhausting and why it's worth being exhausting. My first year, there were 17 kids on the team. They won one game in three years. They were terrible. And uh, we won four games and made that playoff my first year, which was four games is whatever, but, I mean, it was good. Midway through that season, uh, Jamie Bobo uh, was my uh, senior of free safety, and he and I clicked pretty early. And, again, this was when I was first there. And... Um, I, I, I had about half the team where, where they, they were broken down and I could get to them, but there's another half that was yes sir, no sir, and respectful and did what I said to do because I was a coach, but we didn't have that relationship yet that I wanted so that maybe it was about a little bit something that had greater depth than just football. And I asked Jamie, I said, you know, and he, I said what's the deal, Jamie? What do I got to do? I'm here every day. I, I, you know, what do I got to do? He said, just keep doing what you're doing, coach. And he said it almost dismissively, and I said, Jamie, Tell me what's going on. And he said, real talk. And I said, yeah. He said, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I said, real talk. He said, straight talk, coach. I said, straight up. He said, they're trying to figure out if you're a turkey person. And if most of you in here did this, I did this. And what's a, what's a, Jamie, I have no clue what the hell you're talking about, a turkey person. And he said, you know, coach, every Thanksgiving and every Christmas, um, some white folks and minivans and suburbans roll up into our neighborhood and they got turkeys and they got gifts and they unload them and we take the turkey and the gifts because we need it. But then they hop back in their vans or suburbans or whatever and they head back out to the suburbs. We don't see them no more. Now, coach, are they delivering those turkeys and gifts because they really care about us or so that they can go back out to the suburbs and tell everybody what they did for us poor black folks down here? And they said, coach, what you doing? That's the exhausting stuff because that's when you say god they're going to teach me 40 times more than i could ever teach them and that's what led to six years